Hello guys, uh, welcome back to the channel. I've got Spurs at home on Friday. So if you're watching it today, it's tomorrow. Watching it on the match day, it's tonight. Um, obviously, the return of, of certain Brennan Johnson as well. I've got Scott on there. So good evening. How are you? I'm very well, Dan. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. I mean, going into it after a bit of a um, time, I know it's been a few weeks since it's been on. So how are the last few weeks? been for you since you last been on the channel yeah i think it's been it's been tough i think I'm probably i don't know i think i might have previewed the everton game but yeah it's been <clears throat> it's been a difficult uh few weeks as a as a fan that you know has got a m massive amount of gratitude for steve cooper so yeah the everton game i thought we were really poor and probably one of the poorest performances i've seen under steve cooper um it wasn't good enough the fan base it went fairly toxic in the stands where I was sitting after the game. Um, and then obviously the Fulham five nearly, it was, you know, it was fairly pathetic. I thought, I thought that was it. I thought that would be it. Um, and it's, well, oh, you know, he's done so much, you know, for the club. And to be honest, I took myself to bed because I thought, I just don't want to be around. If he's been sat tonight, I don't want to wear it. And, you know, up first thing in the morning, radio Nottingham on, nothing. And it, it's weird, really, because, you know, I can remember we working day, just dreading, thinking, what's if we sack him, then this is an end of an era of a very special time as a, as a Forest fan, absolutely no doubt. And, and part of you just not ready to kind of let go, mm -hmm. let go yet. Um, so I'm pleased, actually, you know, you know, and quite refreshing that, you know, the owner has is, 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 is given him, stood, stood by him. You know, apparently he walked out and they found his ticket He's, he's, he's pressed or he's, he's, he's badging in somebody's garden and I thought bloody hell that definitely it but you know I think you've got to give a bit of credit to the owner that he, he hasn't done what he you know seems to do in in Greece with Olympia Arcos so you know got an extra got an extra game which is not great um but then again is that media speculation we don't know do we but obviously we went to Wolves and it was he was you know he was absolutely right to to take those you know, to make those changes, seven changes, and just put a team out there that <clears throat> we're going to put in 100% for the shirt. Mm. Um, and even though I don't think it was great, it was it was still painful watching at times. Um, the effort was was there and, and we scrapped and, and ultimately got a good point because I think any point in the Premier League is a, is a good one when you expect to be down at the bottom, and, and I do. Um, so that was a good point, and and really we sh probably should have won the match. To be honest, we had the we had the better chances to have to have won. So <clears throat> I still thought, you know, you're listening to it, and fans are saying that looks like it's going to be his last game, and you know it's been really emotional, and people are texting me saying he looks really upset, and I think that's it. His body language is not good, and. And then his interview, I don't know whether he sounded a little bit wobbly, but, you know, he does his usual, very passionate about the club. And, um, you know, every time you hear him speak, you just like, uh, you know, he's, he's done so much and he's got so much respect, you know, from, from the fan base. Um, so I, I'm glad that, you know, he, he said, you know, I'll be there on Friday, which was, which was good to hear um, with his interview with Colin Frey. <clears throat> and I think what's been pleasing ever since is that, some of the players have come out, I think, particularly after the Wolves game. Mangala held his hands up and said, I get it, you know, I'm not be swapping shirts again. And, <clears throat> you know, Nia Carty, Toffolo, Morgan Gibbs White have all come up and come out this week as well. And Toffolo's interview was really good after the game on Saturday mm -hmm. as well. I think it's really important that the players are speaking up for the manager, you know. That there was rumours, you know, from the Fulham game that people were playing for the manager and all that kind of business. So, um, yeah, I think that's been pleasing in this last week that you know they are getting behind him, and then we'll have to see see what happens tomorrow. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's sort of that saying because I said it when I seen the team on Saturday that he went back to the tried and tested. Like I know there was I read something that from that last season. There was only three players that played that weren't even in this air last season. And even then, when you went back to the tried and tested, it actually worked. And they know how 
Cooper works and he could tell. I know it did. Everyone said it's only Wolves to down there, but when you needed to bounce back from Fulham, the bounce back as well. Like, it's shame it went, I mean, a draw at Wolves is a very good point. And he even said before the game, a point against Wolves is a good point away from home. Um, but a fair play to the boys, they bounce back, and hopefully that we can take a lot. Of, I mean, they're positive to take away from the game. Um, but I hope that Keeper knows that this level will give everything for him. Yeah, I think the, <clears throat> the conundrum we've got is that, you know, on paper, the squad is better than it was last season. And actually... Mm-hmm. For a period, you could see improvements in the way we were playing and we were starting to have more possession. And, you know, you could see some progression then of, of you know, better players. But <coughs> not this bit at the minute where those players have come in who don't understand Forest, They don't mm. understand that journey that we've been on. And, yeah. and that's the bit I think we've got to be mindful of. And I think the things with Cooper is that... <coughs> I think he's been let down in the transfer market, particularly up front. Yeah. We haven't signed a player that is similar to Taiwo. And I think with his injury records, we need a player of a similar mould that we can still play the same way, even though we might not be as good or, you know, clinical in goal. But, you know, let's face it, when Taiwo was struggling last season, we were still a better team with him in it than you know without him so i think we've missed the trick i think there's some there's some players that you know we could have signed that that would you know was signable and i think you know and it's no good crying over spilt milk but you know there was gore Carreras at, at coventry um even adebayo at, at luton would have been a decent signing as a backup player um so yes i think you know we signed chris wood we've signed Origi, who are you know they've got experience behind them, but they're, they're kind of coming towards the end of the the careers. I, I think at, at top flight football, when probably what we need to be looking for is 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 players of that similar mould that are strong, fast, and hungry. And I think that's the bit that we need. We need some hunger in the team, and I think that's something that we're perhaps just lacking in the squad at the minute. Is that is that hunger? So I think January they've got to go out and get some players who are hungry. We're going to put in this effort and. May I don't know. Maybe stick to the English leagues to to find to find some of that. Mm, yeah, definitely. I mean, I couldn't agree more. And this one guy that left in the summer that we are set to play against for the first time since he left that is Brendan Johnson. I mean, do you think that money has been spent? Well, I understand that we bought in in the summer, or do you feel that we need to reinvest in it? Uh, I don't know. Part of me thinks that Brennan probably needed the move to push on because I think Brennan's potential probably needed better players around him to get that out of him. And I think the back end of last season probably showed that, that at times he was struggling in that team because of, I think, the players around him, the quality around him. Um, and, and it came to the point where Cooper wasn't picking him for certain for certain matches. Um, Sangari, I mean, I've, I've been I've been I have been critical of him on on Twitter. Um, however, that's not to say that he's a he's a poor player because he's clearly not because he's shown in in moments that he has got he has got quality. But I think it's been difficult for him to hit the ground running, come from a different league. He's not at a pre season in the Premier League. You know all those types of things where he's just He's off the pace. So I don't think we're going to know until next season about Sangari, to be to be honest. Hopefully, for me at the minute, he just needs to, I think, just watch and learn and just, you know, to understand a little bit maybe off the pitch. If when you come back in, then, you know, the bar is a lot higher for him, to be honest. Um, but then part of me thinks... I've not seen too much of him at PSV, to be honest. So, Mangala's obviously playing really well at the base of midfield. And I thought Sangari was probably going to be that player to play at the base um, rather than be that box to box player. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, at the end of the day, Sang- uh, Mangala's playing playing really, really well. Um, 
Well, we'll have to see. Um, Dominguez has gone right off the ball, which has been a surprise, <clears throat> to be honest. I think that has been a surprise. Um, but, you know, I think if we looked at Alanga's stats compared to Brennan Johnson's stats at this time last season, then I think Ilang Ilanga's will probably be stronger. And I know that's probably people thinking, well, he's nowhere near as good as Brennan Johnson, but I will be interested to compare those stats. Um because he's had a few assists and he scored a few goals as well. So I, I still think you know this, this time we've got to we've got to wait. I mean I don't think Brennan's I don't know what has he got. I don't know if he's got assist and a, and a goal at, at Spurs so far. So I don't think he's completely smashing it. But the worry is that he comes to Forest on Friday and that acts as a bit of a of a kickstart for him, which will be a shame because of. You don't want the fans kind of giving him shit because of, of what he's done, but <clears throat> we ain't got time to be nice to opposition players, unfortunately. So chances are he's going to get some stick. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it'd be one of them ones. I think I know. I know someone said earlier about it on Twitter on X to me, like, "Oh, Dred got a good reception from Michael Brennan." I think, and I looked at it and think, "Yeah, that's that's a fair shout to the fair." Um, but I think any between first minute and ninety minutes, or oh, I'll on it is this season now. I mean, don't on that some stick to the opposition. It's I think tomorrow, tomorrow as well. I also think as well that with like old players and like Ben. I mean, I said it about quite a few players. I said it about every, um, Sean Darts and all that. Like it's that it will show a lot more tomorrow for Ben. You no, know, like. With, decisions and that if it's all moaning and I think where's that respect for the club if if you get what I mean like you played for it you, you came through with every chance I mean it'd be interesting to see what sort of like reaction gives to the club if that makes sense I don't think there'll be any problem from Brennan's side I think this is not him lad isn't he so mm. I don't think there is going to be any issue with that I think <clears throat> he will get a warm reception to start yeah. with but once we get started, there's no time for that. Um, and, you know, Brennan's going to want to, as sad as it sounds, Brennan's going to be looking for an opportunity to put put a bit of a mark down because he hasn't quite done it yet. And, you know, playing against Forest that are struggling, he's probably rubbing his hands together and thinking, well, if I've got, a, you know, if this is my career and I've got a chance, take the emotion out of it, then <clears throat> you've got to say that tomorrow is probably a good opportunity for him to do that. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, Spurs are struggling anyway, as well with injuries and that. I mean, they play really good football under their new manager, and he seems to let them going. But we all know, we all know Spurs will do a Spurs there. Yeah, there is that. But then you know, you watch him on Sunday, and they were brilliant. Mm. Um, so you know, keeping keeping that <clears throat> front four. Is, is going to be is going to be hard, and I think because we've been lacking that bit of quality on the ball, it's kind of are we, are we going to hurt him? So I think we've got to give it a go. You know, Everton didn't suit us because it was scruffy and it was ugly. Not great away from home, Fulham. So that was a little bit of a write off. It was scrappy on uh, Saturday, but I think Friday is a different game where we've got to show some quality and we'll be given, you know, we'll be given time on the ball. You know, to do that, I think it's not going to be a scrap. It's going to be, you know, I, I think it'd be fairly toe to toe tomorrow. Mm -hmm. They'll be feeling confident that actually we're just going to go for it, and 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 that might help us a little bit. So we'll see. Um, I don't know what team he's going to pick. Um, we'll have to see. <clears throat> that will be interesting. And I mean, I know that the one positive. Now, I've talked about the last two games as well. More than noticed the fan base because I know every team were really toxic, like as we said, you said earlier, and they were really, really bad. But, um, I mean, the positive that I've talked from the last two away games that the fan base that has been there, the even at Fulham, I mean, you've seen it, we all seen it on TV that like the Susan and Cooper's name, and they were they weren't there. Because they knew they were beating, they weren't there for the, the team, but they were there for people. And even on Saturday, there was them parts of the fan base staying behind the team and people. And it just tomorrow night that they know that the 
fan base needs to be the 12th man. Even when tough get going against Spurs, that they need to stay behind them all the way. Yeah, well, that's going to be the test for the fan base tomorrow because, you know, the away fans that sang his name all the way through at Fulham, you know, again on, 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 on Saturday, they're the fans that have been going home and away for the last two years. Mm. So you can see, you know, there is that, adulation for Steve Cooper that you you know it's completely different I would think in that in the away end compared to what you read on X and you know all, all the negative mm. stuff so you know that backing is completely behind him um but you know we've found wanting at home as a fan base and you know I've said it before and you know we have and it's you know it's not a tourist attraction you know this is come on this is this is about premiership survival and you know, I don't bloody care if you've not been to a game, you've managed to pick one up last minute, just get involved and and, and sing and be part of it because it'll be much more enjoyable experience to feel part of it rather than nobody singing and it's it's crap because it'll soon start moaning and go toxic again. So it is another call to arms that you know we can't get complacent, we're back in it. Um, and Everton have obviously picked up points and, and they're not gonna be far off coming out of it. So we've you know, we've got to get behind them tomorrow. And I'm sure they will. It's a Friday night kickoff, um, so there'll you know there'll be a little bit of uh, lubrication in the in the in the uh, in the voice box. Um, so fingers crossed it'll be you know it, it'll be good atmosphere, and it's going to need to be like that. You know, let's see if we can rattle them. And you know, Spurs have been a bit flaky, and they're known to be a little bit flaky. Um, so I think we we've got to try and rattle them a bit. <clears throat> yeah, definitely. Have we got a score prediction for tomorrow? Um, I'll go for it. Oh, God. Uh, an optimistic 2 1. I'm going to go for Oh, nice. Um, don't blame you. Um, do I say about your socials as well? Yeah, you can follow me on Munich Madrid on, on X. <laughs> um, so I'd like to say thank you for coming on as per usual. No worries, Dan. Anytime, my friend. Right. So I'd like to say thank you for watching, guys, uh, and goodbye.